just pray in the spirit just for a little while. You can sing in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Come on, let's press. Let's press in. Thank you, Lord. It's your heavenly language. You're talking to the Father. Come on, lean into him today. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we bless you, Jesus. Ela ma sonde de de ye ba sonde de esala ba akare de ela ma ambo ye be si de de ikaraba esala la la la. Come on, you're moving heaven and earth right now. Yes, Lord, we bless you. Come on, just begin to bless him. Begin to thank him and praise him. Uh, we bless you. God, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We give you all the glory. God, we give you all the praise today. We lift you up. We magnify your name. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you today. We acknowledge that you're the God. You're the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, high exalted. The train of your robe fills the temple with glory. And we bless you today. We bless you as sons and daughters of the Most High God. We thank you for all the benefits that Jesus provided for us upon the cross. God, we bless you. I thank you that I'm healed in my body. I thank you that I have salvation in my soul. I thank you that peace guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. God, we bless you and we thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, we bless you, Jesus. Yeah, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So good to us. You're so good to us. During worship, uh, I felt like God said, There's somebody here that has carpal tunnel in their left hand. I 
could be totally wrong, but is there anybody that has carpal tunnel in their left hand in the room today? You could just lift your hand. Yes, sir. Right in your wrist there. Okay. Randy, if you could we lay your hands, could Randy lay his hands on you? We speak to that carpal tunnel in the name of Jesus, and we command it to leave. We command the pain to go. We thank you, Lord, for your complete healing in this body. The top of his head, the soles of his feet, to the tips of his finger right now, carpal tunnel, I command you to leave, and I command the peace and healing of God to enter your body right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray for all those maybe on live stream. We command healing to come. We command carpal tunnel to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How are you feeling, sir? Better. Awesome. God's doing it. God's healing it. Praise the Lord. Awesome. So good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, why don't you go ahead and take your seats. Um, for those of you it's the first time here and you're wondering where the heck you are, um, this is the healing rooms, and um, my name is Jacob, and uh, I have the privilege with my wife and, and others to help lead an internship here, and we love it. We have an amazing group that's with us. We, have, we started with eight ladies. We're, we're down to seven. One lady had to leave, unfortunately, in the middle of the program, but it has been an amazing ride so far, and uh, my wife and I, we dearly love these ladies. Uh, they've become like family to us. And um, with the, uh, usually, you know, we, we get the opportunity to, to speak, to, to teach. And uh, I really felt I was praying about this moment. I said, God, you know, what do you want to do today? And he said, I want you to have the interns come and give testimony of my goodness, testimony of what I've been doing in their lives. So it sounds like you're okay with that. So um, I told them about a minute to two minutes. I told them yesterday, right before they left, that way they didn't have butterflies all week. I just let them have butterflies for about 12 hours. So, um, so we're going to do that. God's been doing just some amazing things, um, even just within our staff. Uh, it, it was so cool. Yesterday, uh, Pastor Fred spoke, and he just... He just set me up was really what he did. He just talked about the goodness of God and then the timing of God, that there's a, a, a timing to even God's goodness, that, that uh, there's a kairos time. And what was the other one you said? Horeos is how you pronounce it. And it's, it's the right time. And I believe God put these interns here at just the right time to see amazing things happen in their lives. So, um, you know, they'll be giving testimonies. They, they get the opportunity to help in the healing rooms, to be involved in the prophetic teams, which some of you will be getting prayer today in the prophetic rooms and all that. They're in the prayer rooms. They're getting amazing teaching by some of the best of the best. So um, I'm going to have these ladies just come up one at a time, and uh, I'm going to have you there flashing me to make sure we stay in the light so everyone can see you on camera. So do you want to start, Pat? Do you want to start? Awesome. This is Pat. As I was praising, um, I was being reminded of the compassion of God. And for this one lady, she had lost her, her business and her home. And um, she was really down and depressed and just overcome with such grief and loss. And so we got to minister to her and just take authority over the, the schemes of the enemy, what he had set out to destroy her with and uh, build her back up with the love and the compassion of God to minister to her and put speak hope back into her life. And she walked out with a whole new countenance, that heaviness that she had come in with and her head being down. She wasn't able to even pick her head up. And so the team and, you know, we all worked together and... Um, by the time she left, her head was up and her walk was different and she had confidence that God was going to, that work that he had began in her, restoring her, and he loves to restore people and set people free. And, and that's what we get to do. Thank you, Pat. Awesome. So good. Melina. Awesome. Oh, making a grand entrance. This is Melena. 
<laughs> Milena, uh, tell them where you're from. Oh, um, I'm international from El Salvador. Yeah. And um, yes, it has been a great experience to be here as an intern. I got very sick, and uh, through that, five times to be very sick, I, the Lord gave me compassion for people being sick physically. And so he gave me the information. I didn't know about the healing room here in Santa Maria. Um, but um, one of my friends sent me information for internship for 10 weeks. And I said, well, this is the opportunity. So we went like a two weeks ago to the mall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, one of my biggest experience here is, um, well, after the wine, I just got here, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the highest one. <laughs> I swear, we went to the mall, the whole group, and then when um, we were walking for a while, and so all of a sudden, when we were coming out from Macy's, I felt a sharp pain in my um, ankle, ankle. Ankle, my ankle, I always say ankle. Ankle, um, and I, I say to Emily, Emily, wait. Because I say, hmm, we have been walking a lot. Probably it's because we have been going up and down and walking. I have this pain, but it didn't sound like a pain because you have been walking. It was like a sharp. And so I turned, and it was uh, this man walking with his son. And um, I, I felt like, oh, maybe, maybe it's coming from him. This was my first experience. But through the internship, we have been learning so much about the things that we don't know that we don't know, right? <laughs> so I said, OK, let's try. You know, if I try, all he can say, no, right? That's it, no. There is no difference between no and yes, right? Yeah, and a big no is better than a bad yes, right? <laughs> so, so I said, okay. So I went and I said, sir, um, we are here, you know, just we have a heart to be praying for people. And my name is Malena, and this is Emily. And um, um, I perceive like a pain, a sharp pain in my ankle. <laughs> and uh, do you have any pain in 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 in, in your? Uh, oh, and he goes like, do you have any pain? And so he says, yes, both of them, because due to my job. And um, oh. Can we pray for you? So that was my biggest experience, right, beside this one this morning. Um, and so we pray, and um, after we pray, we ask him to check, you know, like, hey, you know, something like, a, doesn't pray, no. He said, no, no, I don't have no more pain. And also, I had a pain in my right knee, and it's gone. So... Um, <laughs> We bless him, you know, because he was with his son. So before, before he left, we bless him, like uh, acknowledging him for being a good father to be with his son, you know, like by himself. And so it was a great experience that we had, you know. And this one was very out of <laughs> my calendar, but my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So good. This is Emily, watch the step there, yeah. okay, got it. I didn't bring my name tag, but I'm Emily, hi. Um, I brought my phone up here with me for notes because I tend to go off track, so. Um. Okay, so uh, towards the beginning of the internship, they did a weekend conference, it was the healing rooms training, and it was the um, June 29th, and we went because they suggested it because it was good for our internship training. And um, one of the things that stood out a bunch of different things that they were talking about, but Graham Walsh actually spoke about um, unforgiveness and how it's like a huge roadblock to healing. 
physically or emotionally. And that was the second or third time I had heard that now since the internship started. And that time I felt like I was getting a little nudge from God, like, hey, you've, you've got something that you need to work on. And I didn't think I had anything. Like, I felt fine. I was happy. But um, we broke off into smaller groups to kind of practice what the healing rooms would kind of look like. And the leader for my group, his name is Victor, and him and this other woman, Susan, uh, they asked if anybody needed prayer in our group to like kind of test it out. And I raised my hand because I've had this really bad back and joint pain since I was about 13 years old in middle school. And uh, they went through the process and they started praying for the physical healing. And Susan randomly started praying for trauma, which I thought was weird because I didn't mention anything about trauma. I just wanted to fix my back, you know, <laughs> and uh <laughs> And she started telling me about how much he loves me, and I, I lost it. I started to cry because it finally clicked, and I realized that the trauma that I was holding on to was uh, pain from experiencing the sexual abuse from a family member when I was younger, around 13 years old. And um, I had told myself that I had forgiven him, but I realized that there was still that pain deep down, and I hadn't really forgiven him. I was just tired of being afraid every time I was alone in a room with him. And so in that moment, I finally went through the process and I finally let go and I finally forgave him. And in that moment, for the first time in five or six years, I had absolutely zero pain in my back and joints. My pain was completely gone. And I had also, I felt so free and so happy. And I had also forgiven myself in that moment and the negative images that I allowed myself to have of myself, like seeing myself as a reject or I didn't belong or because I didn't look a certain way, I wasn't gonna be accepted and people weren't gonna like me, but I realized that that has absolutely nothing to do with it because I finally saw myself the way God sees me. And he sees me as his beautiful daughter and that's really all I need in life to be happy. Thank you, Emily, amazing. This is Kylie, all the way from San Luis Obispo. All the way, all the way. Hi, I'm Kylie. Um, So this has been awesome. And what the Lord has been doing in me has been less physical and more in my heart healing. Um, He's been doing a lot of just emotional healing and um, breaking down false mindsets and perceptions that I've had of him. And throughout this process, he um, has been showing me like, you don't actually quite believe that I love you unconditionally. And... Um, it's like, well, that changes things <laughs> that were true. I believe it for everybody else, but like, I don't know if it's actually true for me. And, um, and so it was cool. We were in the healing rooms praying for people. And afterward, the couple people I was with were like, how are you doing? How's the internship going? I was like, oh, you know, it's like good. And I like it. And like on the verge of tears and they're like, hmm, okay. And I was like, yeah, this is kind of what's going on. And just my heart is just kind of heavy right now. And they're like, yeah, you kind of think things are conditional, don't you? I was like, oh, (laughs) maybe that could be true, yeah. And so they just started like praying about that and it just clicked. And so I know God's not done yet, but he has just really been like, hey, I love you unconditionally and showing me what an unconditional love looks like, so yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This is Deidre. It took me a long time to get your name, Dee, but we finally got it. Thank you. You know, that's part of my testimony is I've not gone by Deidre until now. I've gone by Dee because, you know, I didn't think there was enough space for Deidre. It was too hard for people, but I'm happy to take my name on now. Uh, I think one of the biggest things for me is identity. And I, I've, I've been working in this process for a while, but I sit down one day and, uh, and the, um, in one of our groups, we were sitting in the living room area and I went, I'm totally comfortable being who I am. I'm totally comfortable sitting here and just being, even with my flaws and everything else, I'm just comfortable. And I thought, what a work God has been doing in me. And, and, and one of those side blessings you don't expect, you come hungry for the kingdom, you come hungry to be more with Jesus, and in the process you get all these benefits. And, and I'd like to share a couple of benefits. As I got here, and and it, I want to say something, because I think there's someone here that thinks that they've been healed once, but God can't heal them a second time. 
And I'm just going to say right now that I, in 2004, I had a subdural hematoma with several concussions. It took them a week to figure it out. I'm still standing here. My brain's working. God healed me before they had to drill into the back of my head. They didn't have to do that. Um, in 2017, I came home and found out I had uh, stage four ovarian cancer and last stage of kidney disease in, in, in one of my kidneys. And I stand here before you, no cancer. And I just had a PET scan. So I, I just want to put that out there for those of you that think so. But really what's happening for me is a lot of physical healing. Um, the first day I got here, my one kidney was deciding to have an infection. And I knew that was serious. But my meds, it took about a week for me to get everything in place. But I went into the healing room for prayer. And when I went in, I, my, I have a little problems with joints in my knee and my hip and my Shoulder were really hurting that day, but I didn't go in for prayer for that. I went in for my kidney. I came out. My kidney that day started clearing, clearing out. The signs started showing clearing out. Um, and, and I came out of the room, and I went, whoa, my hip doesn't hurt. Oh, <laughs> my knee doesn't hurt so much. And my shoulder had no pain. Um, the other day at night, we were standing over here, and Papa Gill and then uh, Pastor Rick were talking about the knee, and I kept trying to try it out, but you know, I have a little bit of an anchor, so jumping up in the air is not probably going to happen for me right now. So I was trying everything, but I was stuck between the two. Uh, th so I didn't know, but I went home and, and I started climbing the stairs, and I'm going, wow, that knee is stronger. I can do that. And then yesterday we went down on our knees, and normally I have to go on all fours, but I was able to stay on two and stay up because my knee wouldn't bend that far back. And so I've got at least 80% healing on that. And I just want to leave that with you. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Awesome, B. So cool. Awesome. This is Vanessa. All the way from Santa Maria, California. Yeah, it's a long way. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Vanessa. Um, can I use that? Because yes. it's pretty amazing. I've always wondered what it feels like standing here, and it feels pretty good. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> yeah, God has been really stretching me out. Like, even doing this is, like, something big for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do love talking to people, and sometimes people can't even get me to sh hush up. But <laughs> I it never. really been like doing a lot of healing in those areas where he's just um telling me reminding me who I am he said like I like Christ is in me like I am he says I am strong I am beautiful I am brave and I am smart is like the world might see you in a way where like yeah you have a learning disability or oh you're this or that you're ugly you're not strong enough or you know but I focus on what God is saying to me, and God says those words, and it's just super amazing how he's been doing so much healing in those areas where I'm feeling like I'm believing it. Like, every morning, I stand, like, stand up in the mirror, and I'm like, good morning, royal princess. I am a daughter of God. I'm like, yes, 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 <laughs> and, you know, I, I sometimes even, like, um, just, you know, remind myself, like, you know, I like, like whenever I do feel those days, because I'm not going to lie, at sometimes I do wake up, I'm just like a battling field where I sometimes feel depressed, sometimes just feel like this weight on me. And I remember just Jacob telling me, reminding me how I could take authority of that and just, you know, saying, okay, that's no longer me. Like I am strong and I am beautiful and all those like lies that the enemy's trying to say, like, no, you're not that, you know. Um, 
so yeah, and definitely God has been really putting, like, showing me, and I just really feel the, his joy, his love, and it's amazing, and it's totally, uh, sorry if I keep going on and on, and <laughs> uh, but um, it's been truly amazing even seeing how God is working through me to reach out to other people, because now that they're seeing this joy and this love, I have a be one of my best old friends, and we stopped talking for a while, and we, like, reached out when we, we, we met up, and she was like, Vanessa, like, you, you look different. And I'm like, really? It's still me. Like, I, I mean, I, I think I put up a little bit of weight, but it's okay. And <laughs> she was like, no, like, you're beautiful. And I mean, like, you've always been beautiful, but you're more beautiful. Like, you're glowing. And, like, you're so, like, comfortable. And I was like, wow, like, really? Like, I was like, yes, I really feel like that, you know, and it's God who's, like, filling me with his love and his joy, and I'm just glowing, and he's like, and she was like, wow, and she's like, I want that, and I was like, wow, yes, like, that's, that, that made me so happy, and, you know, we started connecting, we started talking about how great God is, and, and she's been coming, to, actually, to polls, so she started coming, so, it's been super, super amazing. So yeah, that's my story. Thank you. Awesome. Emma, yeah, you can come up. Would you like the platform? Are you okay? We'll, we'll just keep it up here for you so you can feel the, feel the power, I guess, <laughs> that comes from the platform. This is good. This is good. Okay, um, when Jacob said we had to speak on a mic, whoa. <laughs> um, wow. Wow, what do I say about the Lord? Well, um, he said, remove the I from your vocabulary. It's a we. Um, he says, I've created you with a voice to speak of my glory. Um, wow. Uh, when I came here, I had some medical stuff, and I kept hearing the Lord say, as you heal others, I will heal you in the process. And I've been now asking the Lord, I said, well, you know, Lord, I can get a new spine from heaven. <laughs> you know, you could bless me with a new spine from heaven. Um, it's been amazing in stepping out. Um, wow. Wow. Um, Oh, my God. Um, I thought I was experiencing his intimacy, and it's just gone to whole new levels with him. Um, and even yesterday with the speakers, it's like he was downloading more revelation, and he says, daughter, you're up here with me, and you're still in this mentality, and I need you to rise up to this one because you're always in my presence and you're always worshiping me in everything you do. We have these com amazing conversations. And, um, and like this morning, um, it's Papa God to me. And it's Jesus and it's Holy Spirit. And it's having an individual relationship with each and every one of them. But I've had some amazing experiences in the healing rooms and in the prophecies. And God is so sweet because... Um, I've had some amazing experiences where I've stepped out more in boldness out and just the revelation he's given me. I, um, got to, um, sometimes the Lord will give me pictures or names. And the first week I was here, I thought, oh, okay, that's the Santa Maria mall. Okay. Food court. And so, you know, one of the things is he keeps telling me is don't put me in a box. The kingdom is limitless. So he says, daughter, as you step out into deeper waters by faith, trusting me, um, he said, just, just abide, just abide. And so I got to meet this amazing woman, um, and she was homeless. And uh, the Lord, you know, when we listen and we abide how Jesus is praying, you know, we unite with him. And he just said, pray protection over her. And, uh, but it was an amazing encounter and experience. And for me, I always pray that I'll have a teachable spirit. So the Lord said, just love on her. Just love her. 
And then I got to see, um, meet, um, because I do believe in divine appointments, uh, Leo. <laughs> and I felt I was more blessed. Um, he was a homeless gentleman. And um, he said, you know what? He says, we don't always want stuff from people, but just the fact that you noticed me and that I'm seen by you and that I'm a person, that speaks more volumes to me. And you coming by and just acknowledging me and saying hello, and I thought, wow, okay, Lord, <laughs> this is a teachable moment for me right now that I'm being more blessed by this man than me blessing him. And so, um, so anyway, um, because I have the mic, <laughs> I just want to honor those here. Um, it's been an amazing just experience to work with the people in Prophecy and in the healing rooms. So I just bless you guys. It's so sweet to be under you guys and under your covering and to watch you work. I can't even begin to tell you the downloads the Lord is just giving me and that you work from a place of love. Yeah, so thank you. Awesome. Annie, why don't we give it a big hand for all the intern ladies? Amazing. They, they lied to me. They said they were afraid of the mic, but it didn't seem that way. I'm going to have, can you, guys, can you handle one more testimony? Yeah, okay, Manny, if you want to come up. I asked if Manny, he just shared something awesome that happened just last week uh, to me, so I'm going to have Manny come up. So uh, one of the hats I wear is, is the landscape artist. <laughs> so I was doing some landscaping out in the uh, parking lot, and this young man was kind of meandering around, and I kind of saw him out of the corner of my eye, and then he... He approached me and he says, um, do you know anything about this place? He goes, you got a hat on. It looks like you're, you might know something. I said, yeah, I know a little bit about the healing rooms. <laughs> and he started to describe to me just the devastation that he was experiencing at the moment. He was losing his family, two daughters, his wife, some choices he made. And he was he's just crying out. He goes, I need God right now. And I said, okay, come on in, let's go. And we came into the uh, healing rooms, and I sat with him for about an hour or so. And he just detailed all the mistakes he made and how sorry he was, how devastated he was. And he was just weeping and just lamenting and just kind of like, wow, you know, this guy was really ready. Um, what I saw with this ex uh, experience is that the dark veil over Santa Maria is being pierced. And those people that are in darkness are starting to come out. And this was one of those examples. That's what the, I, I keep hearing the Holy Spirit saying. And then I was driving the bus, just one more example. And I was driving through uh, Albertson's parking lot. And I was just cruising like I do. And all of a sudden I hear, I need healing. And I turned around. I said, the power of God. And, and when I heard that, I need healing, that was the voice of many souls here, locally and throughout the world. They need healing, they're crying out. And so, and that was just in the last couple of weeks, and uh, since I've been here, I've never had such uh, people reaching out to, to me or my space or whatever, and uh, I just feel like the prayers are having great impact and people are coming out. Amen. Manny, why don't, you, why don't you pray for us real quick as we transition? Father, we come to your throne of grace. We thank you for all the blessings. We thank you for the wonderful ministry in the interns and all the ministries that are going here today. Lord, continue to expand your kingdom. Continue to speak. Continue to move in your power. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for walking amongst us and giving us the light to see the light of your glory. And Lord, may we be great stewards of your glory, your word, your truth, and your power. In Jesus' name, amen.